Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be able to come here today to present you the results of the ATIS trial. This trial only completed about a month ago with the last subject completing around the beginning of May. So um, it's very new, fresh data. So just to start, um, this is my uh, disclosure slide and the um, trial was funded by Almond Board of California. So more and more evidence is accumulating to, um, to show that nut intake, nut consumption, is probably protective um, against cardiometabolic diseases. And for example, a recent review of systematic reviews um, found that there was convincing evidence that consumption of nuts could lower fasting glucose and cholesterol and LDL cholesterol and also increase endothelial function or improve endothelial function. This was mainly um, based on walnut <coughs> studies. And it seems so far from the evidence that consuming nuts in their diet has little effect on body weight, blood pressure, and inflammation. And added to this, um, meta-analyses of prospective cohort studies and one randomized controlled trial suggests that uh, consuming nuts and seeds together um, reduced risk of heart disease and um, the, the, it's associated with a reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. So nuts are usually consumed as snacks and snacks can be targeted as maybe an effective way of trying to modify diet to improve health. Snacking habits are uh, linked to risk of obesity mainly probably because there is poor, tends to be poorer diet quality in snacks and also snacking behaviours associated with other behaviours such as low physical activity. In the UK, we know that snacks contribute about 20% of daily energy intake and we've got this information from a National Diet and Nutrition Survey which is based on four-day four food diaries in thousands of people representative of the British population. And we used this database in preparation for this trial to profile the average snack in the UK diet. Um, we just restricted our analysis to adults aged 19 to 64, and we found that snacks contribute about 7 grams of saturated fatty acids per day, which is about 3% of total energy intake. So if you think um, the, the average intake in the UK of saturated fatty acids is about 12% of energy intake, this could go... Um, re replacing these with unsaturated fatty acids could help meet recommendations. Snacks in the UK diet also contribute about 30 grams of total sugars, probably the majority of that is free sugars, 6% of total intake, and again this could go a long way if replaced towards um, helping populations meet uh, dietary <coughs> recommendations. So this provides the rationale for replacing less healthy snacks with um, a healthier snacks such as almonds. So less healthy snacks tend to be higher in refined carbohydrates, um, <coughs> saturated fat, and low in fiber, micronutrients, and phytochemicals, all of which could exacerbate the risk of developing risk factors such as insulin resistance, dyslipidemia, and endothelial dysfunction. And if we replaced unhealthy snacks with almonds, there could potentially be an impact on these because almonds are higher in micronutrients such as vitamin E, they contain phytochemicals such as phenolic acids and phytosterols. They're very low in carbohydrates and saturated fatty acids and high in fiber. So our research question was, does replacing refined starch snacks with, with almonds influence cardiometabolic health? And we tested this research question using a randomized control dietary intervention study with parallel arms. The arms were either whole roasted almonds for six weeks or a control snack, which were little mini muffins, um, uh, which was the refined starch. The study population, we recruited healthy men and women aged 30 to 70 who reported that they regularly consumed two or more snack products per day. And we also did a metabolic scoring system and included people only if they had a moderate risk of developing cardiovascular disease. After recruitment and screening, upon enrollment into the study, they went into a running period of two weeks where they consumed the control snacks and also underwent some of the study protocols. So, for example, they wore the ambulatory blood pressure monitors, which can be quite burdensome to wear for 24 hours. 
So if anybody had any difficulties either adhering to the snack replacement or undergoing any of the measurements, they were more likely to drop out at this stage. And then they were randomised to the intervention, either six weeks of almond snacks or the control snacks at 20% of energy requirements. We had joint primary outcomes. Um, the first one was endothelial function, which we measured by flow-mediated dilatation um, in the full population sample, so we aimed to complete 100 people. And this uses reactive hyperemia um, induced by uh, inflation and deflation of a blood pressure cuff um, to lead to nitric oxide production and smooth muscle relaxation. And this leads to vasodilation, so this is a good indicator of endothelial function. And the other primary outcome was percentage liver fat by MRI. So we used six-point Dixon uh, technique in a subsample of, of the study population. So we aim to complete 40, 20 per group for this outcome. And then we had a range of secondary outcome variables that were related to the two primary outcome variables. We put a lot of thought into the design and the trialling of the control snacks because we wanted to make sure that we didn't give people a, um, a snack that would worsen their cardiometabolic health because this would not be a, then a true control arm. So we developed these muffin snacks, which were like little mini muffins that you could put in a bag and pick out and eat like a snack. And there were a range of six flavours and three were sweet and three were savoury. And we, prov we, we formulated these to follow the average um, UK snack nutrient profile. So they provided 55% of energy as carbohydrate, and if they were sweet snacks, 23% was sugar, 36% total fat, and 14% of this was saturated fat, and 10% of energy was from protein. And then we conducted a little feasibility study just to check over three weeks that when participants consumed the control snacks that it didn't worsen any of their risk factors, and we did indeed find that lipids, body composition, and blood pressure stayed stable over this period. So we had 109 people start running, and um, two dropped out, and so we had 107 randomised to treatment. Then we had two drop out during it from the almond group due to problems with gastrointestinal discomfort. So we ended up completing 105 people in the whole study, and. The groups were randomised with minimisation um, to try and keep the, group, the groups balanced. And, we, and as you can see here from the baseline characteristics at screening, they were very similar for things like lipids and blood pressure and uh, waist circumference. The, at the end of the study, we found that um, the weight had remained stable during the six weeks of the study. So neither group either lost weight or put on weight. So if we get to the, the first results, I've, I'll first describe the results for the primary outcomes. Um, so if I start with liver fat, these are preliminary results because they're very new and fresh and subject to further data checking. The average uh, percentage liver fat in the whole population at baseline was 2.9% with a median of 2.2% and only 10% of the population, um, the 50 or so people that we uh, did liver fat on, um, had liver fat greater than 5.5%, which is considered the cutoff. There was um, no difference at baseline in the liver fat, and there was no significant difference in the change from baseline in the percentage liver fat. For FMD, the measure of endothelial function, there was no difference at baseline, but when we looked at the changes in FMD, um, there was a marked increase in FMD after the six weeks following almonds relative to control with a mean difference of 4% uh, percent unit percent. And then um, of the other secondary outcome variables, I'll just present to you to the lipids and uh, the, home, the insulin resistance measure today. There was a significant reduction in, base, in LDL cholesterol. And the reduction was 0.23 millimoles relative to control, which was about a 6% difference. But there were no differences in other lipid markers or HOMA IR, insulin or glucose. So at the time that we designed this study, there were no other studies looking um, in healthy people at the effects of snacking on almonds on liver fats. But this study came out recently that, all, that reported that eight weeks of almonds didn't alter liver fat or glycemic regulation in adults at elevated risk of type 2 diabetes. 
So our preliminary findings here also agree with this. There seems to be no effect on liver fat and insulin sensitivity, but it does confirm the previous reports that almond consumption has LDL lowering effects. The results on FMD are, are interesting. They suggest that the almond consumption increases endothelium-dependent vasodilation after six weeks relative to the control. But um, we're going to do some further um, checking of the data and look at baseline arterial diameter and also GTM responses. And we're going to use magnetic resonance spectroscopy to further investigate liver fat. And this is a more accurate and sensitive measure of liver fat, particularly where you're looking at subtle changes with diet. And it allows you to look at liver fat composition as well, so, so satura saturation index. And we've yet to report on the other secondary variables. So I'd just like to acknowledge my, um, my co-principal investigator, Dr. Sarah Berry, and Leanne Smith and Vita Dicarianto, who conducted and managed the study, and also the co-investigators who provided expertise, and lots of other students that helped along the way. Thank you for listening. <laughs>